Will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. For a couple trying to start a family, there are few words more thrilling and terrifying than you're pregnant. Sometimes you're prepared, you've been taking your vitamins, doing the exercises, interviewing obstetricians. Sometimes the news comes as a total surprise and perhaps not a welcome one. Your life has been going along rather predictably, maybe even smoothly, and suddenly the line on the stick turns blue and your world is fear filled with serious choices, deep soul searching and emotional conversations. But whether bidden or unbidden, those two little words, you're pregnant, can change your life. Nothing feels simple anymore. Nothing will ever be the same. I remember when I first learned when I was pregnant with our oldest. We were so excited. We had been trying. But somehow we were still kind of caught off guard. We felt like overwhelmed kids. What were we thinking? So the first thing I did was to get myself a copy of the Bible. No, not the Holy Bible, the Pregnancy Bible. Often known to you moms and parents out there as what to expect when you are expecting. The book had just come out a few years before and I read it cover to cover. I would dog ear pages and underline passages and take it to my obstetrician's appointments with me. If I had a question, this was my answer book. What's the best remedy for morning sickness? Why do I have to pee all the time? <laughs> Am I really eating for two? Will I get to keep these audacious boobs? <laughs> Those were the fun questions. But there were also the scary ones. Is my baby growing enough? Will labor hurt? What if something goes wrong? The awareness that you are carrying a fragile little life inside you is miraculous and amazing and unimaginably strange. Without warning, I was in relationship with someone I couldn't even see. Without warning, I felt a fierce protectiveness for a little creature no bigger than a lima bean. I would dream about her and for her. Who would she be? What would she look like? Would she have her father's sense of humor, her mother's clumsiness? Yes and yes. <laughs> Would she have her great-grandfather's crooked pinky? Yes, also. What would her laugh sound like? All of a sudden, this little person who had been abstract, who had been theoretical in my mind, became oh so real in my heart and my body and my boobs. So there was that. Yet no matter how much I poured over my what to expect Bible, it was clear that the only answer to any of these questions was to expect the unexpected. To let go and see where God would take this, for this is uncharted territory. And so as I read the story of Mary this morning, I imagine she felt the same way. Living in a backwater town, in an occupied Palestinian outpost of the Roman Empire, her life was somewhat ordinary and humble and predictable. Until she finally her, hears those two little words for herself, you're pregnant. Now, while our tradition tells us that this is part of God's sacred plan and the angel messenger is our first clue to that, to Mary's ears, it was not necessarily good news. She was an overwhelmed kid, maybe 13 or 14. She wasn't even yet married. And the man chosen for her had no idea what was in store for him. In first century Palestine, this unexpected pregnancy would cause scandal and danger for both of them. Joseph would be well within his rights to reject her, to throw her out. Her family could shun her. Her community could cast her out. And so when the angel shares the incredible news <clears throat> that she was to bear not just a child, but God's child, 
Mary has every reason to be terrified, every reason to say no, to ask God to pick someone else and let her go back to her ordinary life. But she didn't. Mary opens her heart. She finds her courage. She finds her trust. And she says yes. Yes to God's miracle in the making. Yes to those questions. Yes to the anxiety. Yes to the dreams. And yes to the joy that comes out of all of it. For this Sunday in the middle of Advent, the season of shadows, the seasons of hymns sung in a minor key, the season of waiting and watching, we are also reminded that there is joy in this longing. There is joy in anticipating what God will do. There is joy in being invited into God's bigger story. And Mary feels this joy immensely for bursting with excitement and dying to share the news, she doesn't just walk to her cousin Elizabeth's house, she runs. When she gets there, she doesn't just whisper God's promise, she sings it out. She can no longer keep it in. And her joy is contagious, and Elizabeth feels it, and Elizabeth's baby John feels it. For morning sickness aside, there is nothing quite like that first trimester joy. The newness, the wonder, the bursts of energy, the changes in the body, the changes in the heart. Mary exudes the joy of anticipation, for now she has shed her fears because she knows that God is working in her and through her and is with her in all of it. She is not the same ordinary, humble, predictable girl. Once voiceless, she has a powerful song to sing now about justice and wholeness and the lowly being lifted up. Once invisible, she is now a prophet, a wise woman, a light bearer, a love bearer, a God bearer into a world that was deeply longing for good news. And now she is part of this larger story. And despite the risks and uncertainty that lay ahead, despite the dangers and the questions, it fills her with joy. Theologian Henri Nouwen puts it this way, while well, happiness usually depends on our circumstances, joy runs deeper. Joy, he writes, is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and nothing not sickness or failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love away. That difference between happiness and joy is an essential part of the parenting experience. Mm. For raising a child is not always a happy thing because children come loaded with circumstances that can truly break your heart. To love a child, it's been said, is like having your own heart beating outside your body, walking around in the world. And the world can bring pain, and the world can be cruel. And no matter how much we want to fiercely protect that little person from everything that can harm them, we know that we cannot. Mary will soon learn this for herself. Her child will experience the pain and cruelty of the world. For threatened by his radical love, his extravagant compassion, the world will try to stop him, to silence him, to kill him. And he will suffer, and Mary, like every parent, will feel every blow. And yet, even with all this ahead of her, she still welcomes his child with joy, because through him, she will feel in her core that joy is indeed the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved by God and nothing, nothing can take that love away. You see, the Christ child that Mary is carrying is the embodiment. It is indeed the incarnation of God's unconditional love. He is God's heart walking around in the world with us. And he shows us what that means. That even when we fall short and fail and cause harm ourselves, we are forgiven. Even when our world feels dark and heavy, there is light that will overcome it. 
Even when we sense, feel a sense of despair or separation, Jesus is present among us, reminding us that we are never alone. Born to an unwed teenaged mother, in a place and time and world where no one was expecting it, Jesus shows up and shows us what it means for God to show up in a human life. And that changes everything. After she hears those thrilling and terrifying words, you're pregnant. Mary must have had questions, lots of questions. And like all expectant parents, she must have had dreams and anxieties, wondering what kind of life this child would lead, wondering if her own heart could survive walking around in a world that can be so cruel. She didn't have her own pregnancy Bible to dog ear and consult, to calm her fears and answer her every question. But she had something far more profound and far more comforting. The promise and presence of God to help her through it. To remind her that she was not alone in this. That she was part of a sacred, life-changing, indeed world-changing story. And the joy and heartbreak would be held together within it. Because she soon learned, as all parents do, that when it comes to bringing a child into the world, the only thing to expect is the unexpected. Because that's where God always shows up. And that is the very best news there is to proclaim this day and every day. May it be so for us. May it be so for our world. Amen. Amen.